My name is Tola Adekule Johnson. I'm SA to the President on MSMEs in the Office of the Vice President. You're welcome to this um, 29th edition of the National MSME Clinic. But um, something very unique will be happening today. And for the first time, His Excellency will be launching the shared facilities and hosting of the National MSME Clinic. Inmo State will, in, Inmo State will be launching a shared facility that is a fashion cluster. We have um, very close to 200 equipment for the state where MSMEs are able to go and produce, uh, produce, um, produce garments and all what in the state at very, very, very subsidized rates. So you have equipment that they can use to make um, badges and all sorts of things. Produce, um, this is in collaboration with the federal government and the state government. From there, His Excellency will now proceed here uh, to the National MSME Clinics, where we interact, himself and the government will be interacting with the different MSMEs you have seen. I've just taken, uh, I've just taken a walk around, and I've seen very unique um, MSMEs on display today. So, ladies and gentlemen, just en um, enjoy that you can um, enjoy the 29th National MSME Clinics. And also to let you know that we have a lot of MSME agency partners here today. We have the likes of Smedan, um, ITF, TAC, um, Raw Materials, Nexium Bank, NEPC, FIRS, BOI, DBN, and the other agencies present. All these agencies will be having preliminary session this morning, talking to the people and letting them know what um, they do. They, will, they are going to be letting the, uh, um, the different MSMEs know their mandates and how MSMEs in Imo State can key in. Thank you very much. Please, we have enough spaces upstairs, especially for our younger ones, because we know that a lot of people came to the airport, distinguished VIPs, to join the VP to all the other locations. And so when they come, naturally, they need some provision down here. Why the younger ones, like us, should please locate the seats that are executively produced, produced for us upstairs there. So wherever you are, if you know that you are a young man like myself, please just like a big boy, climb up and uh, sit in a cushion we kept there for you so that our elders can easily walk in and have a place here. Having said that, I can see gradual Gradual movement, a young student asked the vice chancellor, thank God a, a chancellor of a university is here, a young student asked the vice chancellor, sir, what is the fastest way to be a graduate? Vice chancellor looked at him and said, the fastest way to be a graduate is to start gradually and you graduate. And so we have started gradually by acknowledging most of our people here seated. And then we are going to graduate with the presence and arrival of uh, His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, if the governor is not performing, if he's not doing anything that you can earmark and I mark, the Vice President would have had no reason to be here today. But because distinguished Senator Hope Uzodima, Governor of Imo State, is so committed... It's a channel television live broadcast from Owori, the Imo State capital, Southeast Nigeria. This program is the 29th edition of the National Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprise Clinic. And this event is happening at the Ayajoku Convention Center here in Oweri. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, is physically present at this event and is here with the Imo State Governor, Opuzodima at this venue. The National Anthem.
May we take the second stanza of the national anthem as the national prayer. It is in the last page of your program. And join me as I say, O God of creation, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and true, great lofty heights attain, to build a nation where our peace and justice shall reign. Amen. May we be seated. Your Excellency, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, Professor Emu Sibanjo, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodima, Governor Imo State, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor, the Speaker Imo State House of Assembly, the Deputy Speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, all the honorable members of the national and state assemblies here present, our distinguished royal fathers led by the Chairman Council of Traditional Institutions and Community Policing, His Royal Highness is a Dr. ECOKK, and all the traditional rulers representing our zones here, the Chairman Elders Council of Imo State, His Royal Majesty, as the Dr. C.I. Ilo Moana, Chancellor of Federal University of Brunin KB, OB of Obinugu, Chairman of our various local governments here present, the Honorable Minister of State, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Ambassador Mariam Katagum, Dr. Diko Rada, Director General Smedan, the Secretary to the Government of Imo State, the Chief of Staff, all government appointees here seated, the chairman of APC Imo State, Dr. McDonald Ebere, all the distinguished members of our great party APC here seated, our women leaders, members of our party, all people from Imo State, our distinguished guests, partnering agencies, Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, the Vice President, in conformity with the, the program, may I at this point invite the Chairman of Owele North Local Government, Lambert Ibe, if you're here, step forward to the microphone and give us your welcome address. Is he here? No dull moments in the language of Golda. In the absence of that, may I invite the Director General Ismir to please step forward quickly. Okorogu M. Obianuju, if you're here, can you please come quickly and let us make progress? Thank you very much. A welcome remark, Director General at the 29th National MSME Clinic in Imo State, held on 14th of December 2021. His Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osiban George Owen, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Imo State, Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodima. Her Excellency, the wife of the Governor, Barista Chirma Uzodima. His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoku. The Speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Kennedy Ibe. The Acting Chief Judge, J. 
Justice Tariza Chikeka, the Deputy Speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Amarachi Chichina Iwanyangu, all Honorable Members of National and State Assemblies here present, Honorable Minister of State, Trade and Investment, Ambassador Miriam Y. Katagon, other federal government officials present, the Secretary to the State Government of Imo State Government, Chief Cosmos Iwu, the Chief of Staff, Chief Nnamdi Anyehi, members of the State Cabinet here present, the Chairman, Council of Traditional Institutions and Community Policing, all royal fathers present, and our dearly beloved MSMEs present, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor that I welcome you all to the 29th National MSME Clinic, the first of its kind holding in Imo State. It's indeed a great day today. And I would like to seize this opportunity to thank His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the MSME Clinic's initiative, which has had a very significant impact on MSMEs and directly boosting the economy. Our very distinguished Mrs. Amina J. Mohammed once said, micro, small, and medium-sized businesses are key to the 600 million new jobs needed by 2030 to keep a pace with the growth of the world's working age. Going by this, I will boldly say that the administration of His Excellency, the President, President Muhammad Buhari and distinguished Senator Hopu Zodima, who gave us the enabling environment to host this 29th National MSME Clinic, are on the right track for the future. As a genuine lover of his people and a passionate driver of economic growth, His Excellency, distinguished Senator Hopu Zodima, thought it wise to establish the Imo State Small and Medium Enterprises Agency, ISMIR, to train empower and regulate the activities of MSMEs in Imo State. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency, sir, for being a visionary leader. Thank you. And now, to all MSMEs present here, I'd like to congratulate you all because you are on the right track for the presence, for the progress of your enterprises today you will hear from key frontline government agencies and stakeholders on ways to grow your businesses. You will also receive on-the-spot on the solutions and answers to questions that have troubled your mind over the years. Just as you are seated here today, be an ardent learner, take advantage of this opportunity to build a solid network Take critical decisions and be set to take your businesses to a whole new level. I want to assure you that the Imo State Small and Medium Enterprises Agency will be here always for you, to put you through, and to help you on the things you'll be hearing and learning today. Imo State currently ranks 11th amongst the states in Nigeria with ease of doing business. Compared to her previous 27th position, this is a great indicator that MSM is in IMO, we thrive better, and IMO will be ranked among the top three states in Nigeria with ease of doing business by the end of this clinic. Once again, I welcome you all to this 29th National MSME Clinics. Just sit back, learn, Ask questions as the, we progress in this great occasion. God bless Imo State. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you so much. We shall put our hands together for her. By name, she is Southern Uju, and everything is coming in Uju in Imo State. Next, may I invite to address us. The Honorable Minister, the Honorable Minister of State, Minister of Industry, Trade,
Thank you. We are now moving fast as I invite the Honorable Minister of State, Minister of uh, Industry, Trade and Investment of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Ambassador Mariam Katagum, to address us, Your Excellency. Honorable Minister, definitely you must have to move higher. We are now progressing. And all of us cannot be equal. Excellency Senator Hope. Governor of Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Professor Placid Njoku, members of the Imo State Executive Council, members of the State House of Assembly, the Director General Smedan and other MBAs here present, Chairman Oweri North Local Government Area, our distinguished partners and participants in this MSME clinic, our Royal Fathers, Gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. I have the singular honor and pleasure to warmly welcome His Excellency, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, SAN, GCON, and His Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzodima, and other distinguished personalities on the occasion of the launch of the MSME Clinic and the fashion and design shared facility holding in this Asian city of Oweri, Imo State. Permit me to also welcome all our partner agencies and sincerely appreciate their support in making this event a reality. As Your Excellency and the general public is very much aware, the MSME clinics have since inception in 2017 served as an auspicious forum for increasing government's relationship with key stakeholders in the MSME sector. This laudable initiative was purposely designed to reduce bottlenecks and provide practical and immediate responses to challenges faced by businesses. The shared facility scheme was also introduced as a proactive measure to provide needed infrastructure and modern machinery within targeted economic clusters across various locations in the country. The aim of the scheme is to stimulate the productivity of MSMEs through the improvement of cluster services and provision of common facilities to help boost local productivity for vulnerable MSMEs through lowered production costs Distinguished guests, let me reiterate that the MSME clinics have been a veritable part of the present administration's specific initiatives that target robust support for the MSME sector. It is also imperative to state that the clinics periodically organized by the Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment in collaboration with the Office of His Excellency, the Vice President, have significantly impacted the subsector. Furthermore, these clinics provide an ingenious cluster of all of government business support services that offer advice and information on what businesses could and should do to start well and thrive. Over the next two days, operators in the MSME space will engage with regulators and business advisory experts on how to facilitate and grow their businesses. In the same vein, young entrepreneurs would have the opportunity to pitch their social businesses to a jury of financing experts. Ladies and gentlemen, our experience from the past MSME clinics has reinvigorated the commitment and sustained interest of the federal government of Nigeria to reposition the subsector for efficiency, growth, and development. Some of the lessons learned 
include the resolve by regulatory services and agencies to decentralize and streamline registration processes. This is apart from access to expert advice and cost-effective real-time solutions to challenges facing enterprises. It is therefore obvious that this program is distinct from the norm as it aims to institutionalize a culture of response and supportive services to MSMEs, thereby leading to improved ease of doing business for our enterprises. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, the decision to develop the Oweri Fashion and Design Shared Facility is in recognition of its cosmopolitan nature and geographical positioning. Fortuitously, bordered by key commercial centers in southeastern Nigeria, Oweri is one of the oldest urban areas in this region. The facility has over 150 machines of various types to keep tailors and fashion designers within and around Oweri metropolis to scale up their productivity and capacity utilization in line with international standards. At the regional level, the advent of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area has opened up more opportunities for MSMEs in the continent, especially here in Nigeria. The federal government is therefore making all efforts to enable Nigerian MSMEs maximize the opportunities provided by the AFCFTA. In this regard, the National Action Committee on AFCFTA has over time engaged relevant stakeholders and subsequently drawn up programs and projects for integrating Nigerian MSMEs into the African market. It is expected that with the repositioning of our MSMEs through activities such as this clinic, the integration of this critical sector into the larger African market <clears throat> will be seamless. I therefore sincerely hope that participants at this clinic and end users of the shared facility will maximize the opportunities provided by these interventions to improve their livelihood and develop the economy of Imo State and the nation at large. As I conclude, let me once again appreciate His Excellency, the Vice President, for his exemplary leadership and devotion to the cause of MSMEs, and to also thank His Excellency, Senator Hope Uzoduma, for the warm reception and excellent arrangements made for these events. I thank you very much for listening, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Abashiri we keleri woti to Oh imelari Onye wanyiri we keleri woti to Oh imelari Onye keru wari we keleri woti to Oh imelari Abashiri we keleri That's Imo Choir for you, a product of His Excellency, our Governor, Distinguished Senator Hope Thank you very much.
Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is here, a little while ago, he was the chairman of the local government, of the host local government, that was supposed to welcome us here. But incidentally, after he welcomed you, all these other places, he was caught up in the go slow, in the hold up. So he couldn't meet up to join us when he did. Right now, he's here, Your Excellency. And by your kind permission, we want to bring him on to welcome all of us. Honorable Sam Sibe. Briefly. Good afternoon, all. His Excellency, Vice President. His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Hopu Zodimma, and other protocol observed. Please, I want to say thank you to the Vice President and to my own and to my own Governor, Distinguished Senator Hopu Zodimma, for citing such a project in my own local government. I know it is not easy. But the Lord has made it to be easy that in Imo State today, I can say that Owere North is a place where Imo State can start getting their IGR. I want to appreciate you. I want to say thank you to His Excellency. I want to say thank you to Nigeria. I want to say thank you to Imo State. It is my pleasure on behalf of my local government to thank you and to say thank you and thank you and thank you. God bless you all. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, APC, <laughs> Chairman APC, are they following us? APC! Yeah. Everywhere you go! And because you have said that, permit me, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the presence of His Excellency the Vice President, to invite this great man of our moment, who, because of him, that the Vice President could leave other responsibilities to come and honor him in Imo State. Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodema, Governor Imo State, to come now and address us. Professor Yemi Osibanjo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, GCON, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoku. The Speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Amara Iwayao and his deputy and other members of Imo State House of Assembly, the Honorable Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Ambassador Miriam Katanku, my dear sister, you are welcome to Imo State.
the special assistant to the president on micro, small and medium enterprises, Mr. Tola Johnson, the former governor of Imo State, Chief Dr. Ikedi Ohakim, the state chairman of the largest party in black and white Africa, APC, McDonald's Ebere, PhD. The Secretary to the Government of Imo State, Chief Cosmos Iwu, the Chief of Staff, Barista Namdi Ayehe, Honorable Commissioners and members of the expanded Imo State Executive Council, heads of federal and state barastatals that are here with us this afternoon, the Director General Smida, the Director General Imo State Small and Medium Enterprise, the Chairman Imo State Traditional Institutions, His Royal Majesty SEC OKK, the Chairman Imo State Elders Council, His Royal Majesty Dr. C.I. Ilomaya, and other traditional rulers and leaders, the, the chairman of the 27 local governments in Imo State, distinguished invited guests, captains of industry, MSMEs clinic participants, great Imo sons and daughters, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Observing the ceremonies of today's event gives me a very great joy. While we were inspecting the facilities of the MSME clinic, I almost had good swimming pool. What kept reoccurring in my mind is that the dream component of our shared prosperity agenda has been fulfilled. Indeed, the commissioning of the fashion shared facility for MSMEs is a salutary signpost for the shared prosperity agenda of this administration. This is why I can never thank President Mohamed Buhari and his team enough for the creative enterprise expressed in this MSE scheme. To say that this creative vision of administration, of his administration, has given vent to our shared prosperity program will be stating the obvious. What needs to be said is that we sincerely appreciate the federal government for almost being there for Imo states. The event of today is yet another testament of our, your commitment to the development of Imo states. On this note, on behalf of the government and people of Imo state, I most heartily welcome and commend our dear Vice President. Professor Yemi Osibanjo, for the former unveiling of Imo Micro Small and Medium Scale Enterprises. This laudable scheme is a collaborative venture 
between the, gov the federal government, the state government, and some other private sector partners. Indeed, the cardinal objective is the empowerment of our young men and women and total eradication of poverty in Imo State. Not so long ago, His Excellency, the President of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, was in Imo State to commission some strategic projects executed by our administration. Before then, His Excellency, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, was also in our state for the inauguration and commissioning of some critical projects constructed by our administration. These are clear signs that something is happening in Imo State. We must thank our great leaders for this attention that is always being given to our dear state. I am glad, therefore, to observe that Imo State is not only the eastern heartland of hospitality, where activities are constantly going on, but is slowly but steadily returning to East Los glory of being the industrial hub of the Southeast. <laughs> While I do sincerely welcome our erudite and amiable Vice President once more to Imo State, I want to use this auspicious occasion of the event, which is a very symbolic pathway to an industrial turnaround to tell Your Excellency that we have commenced the revival and recovery of all the moribund industries built during the administration of our late Sam Bakwe of the Blessed Ramon. As Your Excellency may already know, we have revived the Adapam industry with efforts in full gear to make it function at full capacity soonest. When that is in place, the factory will be in a position to employ 20,000 jobs. Our focus is now on the abandoned chew industry, which was taken over by Amcon. I'm going to go over our modern tree industry built by the late Mbaka administration for relaging its financial obligation. I'm glad to inform Your Excellency that we have struggled through internally generated revenue to pay AMCO fully the total indebtedness. And Ancon has also returned the industry back to the state government. This industry holds a very great promise to the economic development of the state, as it also has the capacity to employ over 10,000 jobs when functional. Indeed, on behalf of the good people of Imo State, I want to plead with our dear Vice President to do for the true industry in Imo State what you have done today for the textile industries. I am therefore appealing that the true industry, which is now begging for help, be helped with the necessary equipment to enable its immediate takeoff. The project clinic being inaugurated today is important to us because it is part of government's practical efforts 
to reduce unemployment and poverty in our land. It is aimed at engaging our youths in productive ventures to make crime unattractive to them. Worthy of note is the fact that while the state government provided the building and other logistics for the shared facility, the federal government graciously availed the beneficiaries of this, much, of this program the much needed equipment. Most of these equipment are not in anywhere in the southeast. Even a bar that is the industrial hub for Texas have not seen some of the modern digital equipment sent to us by federal government. There is also a 24 hours power supply to ensure uninterrupted uh, productivity. What is left is for the beneficiaries to move in with their skills. Their destiny is now in their own hands. All thanks to the brilliant initiative of our able and capable Vice President. Our shared prosperity agenda is mostly about empowering our youths in our determination to ensure that our youths are productively engaged. We established a Ministry of Entrepreneurship and Skill Acquisition. So far, we have trained thousands of youths and empowered them with the startup capital. In doing this, we have tapped into all the programs initiated by federal government and East agencies for the empowerment of our youths. We remain grateful to the federal government for always offering a helping hand. Mr. Vice President, one of the reasons for the restiveness of the youths in the South is indeed in Imo State is lack of jobs and unemployment. And there are various categories of jobs. Most of our young men and women are not easily employable for lack of the requisite academic criteria. We have recently established the University of Agriculture, Umago, which has already taken off. I want to plead that the, the Industrial Training Fund establish one of their vocational training centers in Imo State, so that in partnership with our University of Agriculture, the young men and women who are not able to get admission into universities can be trained through that vocational center, and the University of Agriculture may issue them diploma certificates. So that if they cannot start jobs on their own, they can be employed by those who have jobs to do it. So indeed, it will be a great pleasure. As usual, we want to thank you for all you have done in the past. And we'll also thank you if you can influence the location of one of the vocational centers of the Industrial Training Fund in Oweri. It is, has become necessary for me to warn that those who are beneficiaries of this particular initiative, the initiative of today, must take it more seriously because of the multiplier economic benefits derivable from its value chain. Government has done its own part. Now it is the turn of our young men and women to avail themselves of this golden opportunity to showcase their talents with the concomitant economic benefits and the growth of our state. Let me also use the opportunity of the visit of the Vice President to once more invite investors to come to Imo State. We have developed a special program 
to facilitate external investments into Imo State, ranging from infancy status that allows for tax holidays and then some other logistics, including the provision of power by using gas. We are now extending gas through pipeline to our industrial hub, where industries will be powered through gas. And there will be no problem of electricity. The, the con politically contrived insecurity sponsored by the opposition parties have been brought to relative uh, management. And we can guarantee security to those coming to Imo State to do business. We have improved our ease of doing business from the 27th position we were in the country before we are now ranked the 11th best state for ease of doing business. That is a great leap forward. What is more, we are at the center of the southeast and south-south. We have the population, and above all, our people are hospitable. Already, some private industry giants are here with us doing business, both in the refinery, manufacturing, brewery, and other areas of uh, endeavor. We expect more people to come because Imo State is actually the destination point for investment. To my dear Imo youths, this is my message for you. As the government is making sincere efforts to ensure that you, your lives are better, don't hesitate to buy into all the available schemes of federal government and the state government that can better your lives. Don't allow enemies of the government, don't allow blackmailers of federal government to use you for their nefarious activities. Shun drug abuse, shun criminality, shun violence. In all things, let the fear of God be your guide. Once again, I want to welcome our able and capable Vice President of Imo State and thank him for always finding time to address our issues. As you go back, Mr. Vice President, the Almighty God that has protected Imo State will continue to guide you and endow you with greater wisdom to manage the affairs of your office. May God bless all of us.
If we are here in all honesty with our hands together, can we please do something to appreciate this rendition from the emo choir? Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President, I'm always, each time I see you, I begin to wonder what is this chemistry between Your Excellency, the Vice President, and the Governor of Imo State. And quickly, when I look at the name of Simba Joe, I discover it is eight letters. And when I look at Uzodema, it is also eight letters. You can see the coincidence and the Bible I read teaches me that the figure eight has to do with the ancient builders. And so we are here building a relationship, a family, APC family from the federal and the state. With due respect, ladies and gentlemen, join me as I invite to the podium the number two citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Professor Yemi Osimbajo, to address us. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the Governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzodima. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Imo State, Professor Placid Njoku, and other members of the Imo State Executive Council present. The Honorable Member representing Okigwe South, the Honorable Chike Okafo, and other members of the National Assembly present. The Honorable Minister of State, Industry, Trade and Investment, Ambassador Mariam Katagun. Your Excellency, the former Governor of Imo State, Chief Ikedi Ohiake. The Speaker, Imo State House of Assembly, the Right Honorable Kennedy Ike eBay, I think, and other members of the Imo State House of Assembly present. The Director General, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, Dr. Diko Umaru Rada, and other heads of government agencies and parastatals present. The Director General, Imo State Small and Medium Enterprises Agency, Ms. Obianuju Okorogu, the State Chairman of our Great Party, the All Progressive Congress, Mr. McDonald Ebere, the Chairman of Local Governments, the Chairman Imo State Traditional Institutions and Community Policing, His Royal Highness Emmanuel Okeke and other traditional rulers present. The Chairman Imo State Council of Elders and His Royal Highness Kletos Ilumoya, Special Assistant to the President on Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Mr. Tola Johnson, Captains of Industry, MSME Clinic participants present, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, thank you very much for supporting and hosting this 29th National MSME Clinic. And also thank you for the very excellent preparations that you've made 
for the success of this MSME clinic. I bring you all the warm felicitations of Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari, who's, who has made MSMEs a priority for his administration because they are an engine of growth for the economy and because they account for almost half of national income and three quarters of the jobs created in our country. Given our determination to support our countrymen and women who run small businesses, we have held MSME clinics in at least 28 states of the Federation. The MSME clinic is an opportunity for small businesses to meet with regulatory agencies such as NAFDAQ, uh, the Corporate Affairs Commission, the SON, SMEDAN, Bank of Industry, etc., so that they can get to know what the problems of small businesses in this state are, and the small businesses themselves can benefit from the advice and, in some cases, the help of some of these regulatory agencies. We have explained to the regulatory agencies that they are meant to be facilitators of business, facilitators of trade, not obstacles to trade, which is why we bring them to every state where we have an MSME clinic so that they can interact with the businesses themselves. In the course of running the clinics, we notice that in addition to their request for a more friendly regulatory environment, MSMEs also wanted to be supported in terms of production facilities which were lacking or too expensive. And this is how the idea of supporting MSMEs by providing at least one shared facility in every state of the Federation came up. This is also why the President approved the shared facility scheme for MSMEs as part of the MSME clinics program. And I'd like to spend a bit of time explaining the whole concept of shared facilities. A shared facility is a place where the government provides various equipment and machines for a particular type of trade. These are usually very expensive industrial type equipment and machines. They're usually too expensive for any small business to buy. So what government does is that it invests in buying the equipment and in providing the space for the facility. That facility is located in an area where there is a cluster of that trade or business or a place where there are many people who are engaged in the particular trade or business. The idea is that such people can then have access to the use of the machines and equipment in that facility. In this way, government assists many people involved in the same trade with machines and equipment that they would not otherwise have been able to buy themselves. To do this, the federal government partners with interested states, the Bank of Industry, Nexim Bank, and the private sector. And the particular trade or business to be supported is chosen in collaboration with the state government and relevant MSME stakeholders. In 2021 alone, work has commenced on the development of 10 such facilities across the states of the Federation to complement those previously commissioned in Anambra, in Benue, and Lagos. In Benue State, we built a 200,000 capacity yam storage facility at the Zaki Biam International Yam Market, which is the largest yam market in Africa and possibly in the world. In Lagos State, we built the Eco MSME Fashion Hub 1 around Allen Avenue, which services about 300 tailors and fashion designers daily. The Anambra State facility is in Ogunike Oyi. It's a shoemaking facility with industrial equipment and machines within close proximity of the Anambra Shoemakers Cluster. The Edo State facility is a woodwork carpentry and cabinet making facility located within the Edo Production Center in Benin City. And we are, by the grace of God, opening that center in Edo State on Friday the 17th, which is this Friday, 2021. 
This is also, there is also the Kaduna State Facility. It's located within the Soba Tomato Cluster and the Soba Local Government Area of the state. The manufacturing of specialized machinery for tomato paste production is ongoing and is expected to be commissioned within the first quarter of 2022. We have a Kebi State facility located in Benin Kebi also in Kebi State. The, fa the facility will provide two lines of rice milling machinery to assist rice farmers to also mill their rice and benefit more from the rice production value chain. Equipment manufacturer has also been completed with a facility expected to be commissioned in the first quarter of 2022. The Open State also has a shared facility. This is to be located within the popular Adire market in Abel Kuta in Open State at the request of the state government. Under the scheme, works on upgrade of internal infrastructure will commence in January of 2022 and is expected to be completed in April 2022. Eboye also has a facility located within the Uburu Industrial Cluster in Uburu, in Uburu Ebony State. Machines have been produced for the production of various types of footwear and leather works for shoemakers in Ebony State. Kano also, the Kano metropolis of the state, where we have uh, a shared facility for various types of footwear and leather works for shoemakers in the state. Katsina State also has a facility for tomato farmers within the state and production, of course, of machinery is going on there. This facility, the facility uh, in, in Katsina is expected to be commissioned also in the second quarter of 2022. So many other states. Ekiti State has a cocoa farmer's facility. And, of course, they are meant to process cocoa and cocoa flour. And we expect that this facility will be commissioned also within the coming year. Bauchi State, so many states. Uh, Bauchi State has its own facility in Azare, which is for groundnut provision, uh, for groundnut uh, processing. It's a mo modern groundnut oil milling plant. And the facility is also expected to come on stream uh, early next year. The facility that we just commissioned today, about an hour and a half ago, is the fourth to be commissioned in the country. It is. It is a facility strategically located beside the Ama Kohia market, considered to be one of the most important markets within the metropolis, and of course is along the famous Olu Road, which is one of the most important commercial areas within the city. It's a well-equipped facility for the shared use of those who are involved in the production of various garment wares and clothing items. It has special facilities that enable it to be a one-stop garment production center for end-to-end -end production of various types of clothing items. The facility comprises about 200 world-class, both manual and fully automated fashion equipment, and it will provide service for 350 small businesses daily and 110,000 each year. It will enable fashion businesses. It will enable fashion businesses within the Oweri metropolis and environs to carry out several tailoring activities, including straight sewing, weaving, hemming, embroidery, monogramming, screen printing, and heat. The monogramming facility is particularly important because it enables those who want to use the monogramming facilities, either to make t-shirts or caps or face caps, to be able to do several thousands in one day. These facilities are not available in most parts of the country, and many of them are made available here. The idea is to improve the quality of locally made clothing items, improve household income for local tailors, and create jobs and create access to high quality and modern machines. I think that it will also improve the contribution of tailors to the revenue of the local uh, and state and federal government as a whole. But let me commend His Excellency the Governor of Imo State and his team for their commitment to improving the lives and opportunities available to the good people of this state. This partnership with the federal government is an excellent example of the way that a state government 
should work jointly with the federal government in order to benefit the people of the state. The federal government and federal resources belong to all Nigerians. Each state is entitled to seek partnership with the federal government to better the fortunes of their own people. In April, I was here to commission several road projects, including the famous three-kilometer-long Dick Tiger Road, a road, covering, a road covering more than 10 streets, including the Dick Tiger Street itself, and its commissioning solved the problems of flooding in that neighborhood. Only a few weeks before I came, the President commissioned virtually two major road projects, the World Bank uh, to Federal Secretariat Road and the Azomta to General Hospital to Portacot Road. In September, in September the, the President came personally to commission some roads in this state. Of course, since then, there have been several commissioning of infrastructure projects. This is the value of good, purposeful government. The only way to provide good jobs and a decent standard of living for our people is by providing good infrastructure to enable them to do their work and to run their businesses unhindered. This aligns with Mr. President's own belief that the building of roads, rail, power, digital technology, and other infrastructural assets must be the first priority for economic development. And in this, we have no choice. Africa's largest economy can only provide opportunities for its huge population if it runs on modern infrastructure. And this is why the President has prioritized infrastructural development and has brought some key projects under special funding arrangements. For example, the second Niger Bridge, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the Abuja Kano Roads are all under, these are all these are all under the presidential, the special funding arrangement under the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. The funds are provided and managed by the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority. The federal government is focused on providing Nigeria with a good, with, with, with providing every Nigerian with good paying source of livelihood. This means providing a favorable environment to do business and a safe and secure environment. And as we work assiduously towards this objective, we call on you, the great people of this state, to stand with the state government and the federal government. This land on which we stand today is yours as Nigerians. We have no other land to call our own. We must never allow this land to become unruly or ungovernable. We must do our best to ensure peace. This is the only way to eat of the bountiful fruits of this land, this land that God has given us. Your Excellencies, honored guests, it is my very special pleasure, therefore, to officially uh, hand over the fashion cluster, the shared facility uh, in the Amakohia uh, local government, Amakohia market, to the chairman of the local government administration. We have already commissioned it, so we are now officially handing it over to him. And it's also my special pleasure to officially open the Imo State MSME Clinic and the 29th National MSME Clinic. Thank you very much. God bless you. It could be better. That round of applause could be better. Could be better. On this note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, having heard the voice, the declarations, the proclamations of His Excellency, the Vice President, may I humbly request we rise to take the national anthem.
You've been watching the 29th edition of the National Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise Clinic here at the Ayajoku Convention Center in Uweri, the Imo State Capital. Um, this program was um, witnessed by the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Shibajo, and the Imo State Governor, Ope Uzodema. And few minutes before the vice president arrived at this venue, he already commissioned a multi-millionaire shared facility for fashion designing along Olu Road in Oweri, the Imo State capital. With the departure of the vice president, Professor Yemi Ochibajo, at this event, we've come to the end of today's broadcast from Ayajoku Convention Center in Oweri, the Imo State Capital.